There are a number of forces that we're going to encounter time and again in physics, and so we have to learn how to model them mathematically so that we can then put them into a math problem that we can solve. Two forces that we'll start off with today are the forces of gravity, which is the force of the Earth pulling down on us with its gravitational field, and then also we'll look at the force that pushes things back up. Part of our justification for doing this is just so that we can learn how to model forces in physics problems. But also, I'd like us to get a sense of what weight actually is when we sense it. Gravitational force is always proportional to the mass of the object. The force of gravity is equal to m, the object's mass, times g. What's g? g is the gravitational field. It basically tells you how much force is on an object given its mass. It's going to have to be in units of newtons per kilogram, because if you multiply something in kilograms, the mass, by it, you better get a force in newtons. The direction of the gravitational force is toward the center of the Earth. So on Earth, that's always our direction of down. This varies from place to place, because the direction of the center of the Earth varies from place to place. So this g has a pretty constant magnitude anywhere on the face of the Earth. It doesn't vary by much, though it does vary somewhat. Geologists can use this fact that the gravitational field changes somewhat from place to place to learn something about the structure of the Earth. At the Earth's surface, the gravitational field's magnitude is about 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And that's the number that we'll use most of the time in this class, though sometimes we'll just round it up to 10 if we want to do a uh, back-of-the-envelope kind of calculation. Related to the force of gravity in many contexts is the normal force. And that's a force that's a contact force between two objects exerted by their surfaces. Basically, if we have some object resting on another object on a surface, then the object that it's resting on is going to be applying a normal force outward. And generally, in um, most of our cases, this normal force is going to be a force of constraint. Its magnitude is whatever it needs to be to cancel the forces that are acting inward on the object. So in this particular case, we've got the weight of the anvil, which is the force of gravity on it. Then we have some support force, which is the normal force, acting up, which is from the table. The net force is zero. The anvil is not accelerating we hope, is not actually the weight itself. The weight itself of an object is just the force of gravity on the object. The sensation of weight is actually the normal force. In many cases, these forces have the same magnitude, such as was shown with the table and the anvil in the previous slide. Gravity, it turns out, acts on all parts of a body to accelerate them the same rate together. What we feel is the normal force. If we have the only force acting on us being gravity, so the net force is gravity, we don't feel anything. That's when you feel weightlessness, the weightlessness of free fall. And what this really is going on is there's no external stresses on our body. So if you're in free fall, all the parts of your body are accelerating together. They're not, as in, nothing's trying to squish us together, mash us, tugging or pushing on each other at all.